I want you to get together. Here, here's a here's a question I have for you guys, and uh, this this ties in a little bit is what most people know of like the 20th century and probably in the the late 19th century. There was obviously this quick shift in technology where like like if you believe the narrative, what they went from like the 1860s or something like that with the first automobiles, and then if you believe what they tell us, in a hundred years they were on the moon basically. Like so, so where did this come from? Because it does. I mean, if you believe you know, if you go down the rabbit hole and you believe that this, these buildings represent a possibly a time of free energy, something was, that sounds, if it's true, based on like electromagnetism, the ether, and I mean, whether that's true or not, it seems like that would probably be better for, you know, the environment, even if you're not a tree hugger, it, it would, it seems more sustainable. And then mm. all of a sudden you have this technology that just pops up and obviously it's, it is destructive. Because I mean, like literally that, that stuff's powered by fire and explosions. And like where do you, like where do you guys think that like that came from? Cause it because it because yeah, because you would think that like I, I was just, I was looking this up the other day and I said I was looking up when was electricity invented. Obviously electricity is not invented, but when was it used practically? And I remember thinking about that. One of the one of the things that came up was some of this some of this garbage they tell you tell us in school was that Benjamin Franklin like flew a kite with a key on it and it got struck and you're like <laughs> that is the stupid you know, like now looking back that is one of the stupidest things i've ever heard because it's like like nobody knew about lightning and electricity before benjamin franklin like that is i mean that is something you tell a kid and they're like oh that's interesting because benjamin franklin for them might well live ten thousand years ago mm -hmm. but he's but it's really not that long ago and so, yeah, so then you look at it, it's like, yeah, they didn't, I think they had the electricity was like invented by some guy had a working electrical coil, like in probably like in the 1870s or something like that. But it all happened, all this stuff happened at, at a certain time and it progressed rapidly to now that we have, you know, smartphones and the internet and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, on, on that, I think Daniel 7, the prophecy does talk about this age that we live in now where this type of technology would start to appear. That fourth beast I believe is before and after the millennial reign. Okay. So, so it's the fourth beast that was had the kingdom taken away, given to the saints, millennial reign, millennial reign ends, short season begins, the fourth beast, the kings who lived through it, take over again and reestablish what they were attempting to build prior, which is why uh. I think we have this Roman iconography weaved in throughout all Freemasonry and secret societies because they are the leaders of and members of that original beast system that was there beforehand. Mm -hmm. And once the millennial kingdom ends, a new world order began. And that's what we're always talking about in the secret societies. A new world order is not coming. They established it for the little season. We are in the new, with the new world order after the millennial reign. And I, I do think, like I said, um, what we have today is what's described as this beast with eye, with metal teeth and nails of brass, weapons, bullets, guns, the things we had to deal with today. It's a system of metal churning systems industry, you know, mm -hmm. cogs. It's it's the world you're describing, explosions. It's it's a it's a world driven through metal, not stone. And it also describes this is more diverse than any of the nation that became before it. And diversity is something that our society pushes hard now. Yeah. It's a key. It's a key word ripped straight from Daniel, when you know many other things in our society are also ripped straight from the Bible. Like the word pride is also pushed on us hard as well. And you know, diversity I thought was interesting as a main concept because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make an amalgamed world where there's no borders, right? Every the one world order, one one currency. Everybody becomes one. Everyone just mixes with each other and becomes mm -hmm. a strange color of beige or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but they have this and all, all under the banner of diversity is our strength, right? That's discussing mm -hmm. the diverse kingdom of metal and brass, which is where we live, which was before and after the millennial reign. Um they picked up where they left off and so, so you believe on. so you believe that some of this technology, do you think perhaps this could be founded stuff? Do you think this is like like maybe there was this this knowledge was known mm, at a time before and like so that's why it was almost like somebody knew how to jump, you know, like as soon as they got it, like okay, we'll go. Mm -hmm. And obviously per yeah, I mean, I don't think that anyone could deny that it progressed rapidly. No. I think I think just just before 
tribulation occurred, I don't think we really know what that world was actually like. I don't think we, I think we're told it was just people on donkeys and like just, mm-hmm. just barren desert and, and everything was terrible. And, you know, <laughs> there was no technology whatsoever, you know, and people lived to the age of 20 or something like that. And, but I, I, I'm starting to think with a lot of research into this, maybe they lived in something akin to a beautiful architecturally designed world than we actually understand. And I think where Jesus was walking wasn't just deserts necessarily. <laughs> it was actually buildings and ornate structures and all sorts of things that we, and I, I think we've been lied to just how complex that world actually was yeah, te- technologically and possible. physically. Yeah. Cause there's plenty, like, it's weird. Cause in medieval art, for example, they always depict Jesus as though he's wearing medieval clothing and walking in medieval places. And the people that have tried to describe this in the art world is it's like a style. Apparently the people of that time have a weird concept of time and, that they they like to draw historical figures as though they lived with them and it's kind of that is the most that's nonsense like the the, the things that it's like we're so smart that we understand why they did these things you just don't understand art okay that's the type of attitude these articles have about trying Mm. to justify why these things were done but is it possible this is artwork from the times of where Jesus was actually walking around in these cities, you know, and it's, yeah. we're just told, we're just told it's, it's medieval artwork and they just like to be so romantic with the way they depicted historical figures. It's well, kind of like, no, that's Jesus wearing like <laughs> medieval clothing in a medieval building surrounded with all of his people having a, having a meal. You know what I mean? That's. Well, perhaps, they, well, they, yeah. do, they do, they do like a twist on that. Sometimes like you see like, art depicted but it's usually jesus wearing what you uh, would imagine him wearing in 2024 like mm-hmm. walking around a city but he would still be wearing all the robes and the sandals and everything they don't t- typically depict him wearing like blue jeans and you know a flannel yeah, yeah. no no exactly it's, it's just odd but i'm just thinking maybe like that technology was just about to begin you know like they were just about to start building factories and they were just about to start messing with electricity and then Christ came and ended that very quickly. I, I learned so, it. I, I, I researched this once. I was reading this book about Rome because I was really fascinated with the idea that that this this may never made sense to me that the Romans had technology that they didn't have afterwards, and like this stuff was lost. So I I said, well, what did they have? And if you go back into the first century, like Nero, possibly the Antichrist, they said he had a tower that actually rotated and had a machine that literally had like ball bearings and everything. Mm-hmm. And then you start looking at what the Romans had in the first century and like literally they had working machines, whether they used water to spin, the, spin their gears. But I mean, they had machinery, you know, depending on whatever they did. I think I was watching a show. If you watch some of the, like they did stuff with glass that was crazy. And I think there was a the craziest thing they did. They figured out a way to basically mine these mountains where they could literally blow them up like between supposedly with like water pressure. I mean, like they were saying, like they destroyed mountains. So, like, what kind of tech did they really have? And it's like, obviously, we have no idea. And and even if where Jesus was at was not technolo- technologically advanced, you could go places today in 2024, and you could find people walking around wearing sandals around huts. It doesn't mean that the whole place is like mm-hmm. that. It just means that mm-hmm. obviously there's pockets of place. And obviously, Jesus being from Nazareth, even. That was that was mocked at the time. Nothing good comes from Nazareth. This is this poor place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like maybe that place was poor and parts of the place was poor. But yeah, like the obviously wherever the Ro- Romans set up their their governors and everything that were probably not like that. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, we imagine when Jesus was here, don't we? That it was this beautiful place where etheric energies were and, pe- and people were using these buildings to harness cathedrals, cathodes you know giant batteries basically cities laid out like circuit boards perhaps that was his kingdom and it was powered by his presence it seems like that's the top theory right now i've heard quite a few times him being around is what powered everything in this etheric ether like sense and the buildings are basically just duds now they don't do that anymore because the energy just isn't there anymore for them to harness anything so it seems before he turned up perhaps like you said they were trying to make their own way of getting power and energy by burning coal exploding things a destructive way of doing it you know what i mean uh, non-renewables you know limited energies let's say oil and things like that but i think it, it seems like it, it probably got cut short 
he established his reign and says, look at what I can do. It's way better than what you were going to do, basically. Mm. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then obviously he leaves. The buildings that are left behind no longer function as they did when he was around. So they pick off where they left off and try to reestablish these old technologies. And that's probably where they got back to, well, let's use our water pressure cannons that we broke mountains with to crack the earth and extract the shale gas instead. Mm. That's mm. fracking. That's what mm. it is. It's the same. It's the same technology, you know. Oh, wow. And uh, mm. so maybe that's what it is. It's it's just been repurposed to rebuild this new world order where it's we power everything because we are the gods. We harness the energies of all things and we control the processes of the flow of energy. And um, we don't need Jesus to have power to have electricity. We have the Prince of the Power of the Air on our side. We'll use him instead, and he taught us to do this instead. Maybe this is what's going on. And people, yeah, you know, it. Manly P. Hall wrote about uh, magic. And it says the true initiate has the seething powers of Lucifer running through his veins. You know, these type of Lucifer is the giver of power today. It's he's the one mm -hmm. who gives us the energies to build and be the builders and establishers of this new world order. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe this, we're living in like an echo, lesser, crappier version of what Jesus had. And this is Lucifer's attempt to create his version of a millennial reign. And he, mm -hmm. he was about to do it before Jesus turned up, but he got cut short and now he's going all out now to reestablish what could have been in like maybe like a, a a prideful look what i can do god you know i can be just as powerful as you i can do what you did i can create mm -hmm. electricity too you i know, can make I can, it rain Storm yeah gods. All the, exactly i've got my weather modification i can do whatever i want you know um but again i mean vitaly have you have you uh looked into like so where, where do you have any kind of research into that like the like the shift in the technology in the 1800s yeah, I mean, it's like the uh, the old verse, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. If you look into a lot of like legends and paintings, you see uh, things like magic mirrors, right? Where people mm -hmm. are able to talk to somebody on a mirror, you know, on the other side of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're able to get answers to questions just by asking the mirror. I mean, we got this, right? Yeah. But what if sure. that was like the technology during the millennial reign? They're able mm -hmm. to communicate with each other. They had phones, um, airships. It was almost like a steampunk type world. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. In my head. Well, you know, it's interesting. I was, as I always connect everything to the movies, I was thinking about this. The first Transformers movie, they find, they discover Megatron in the Arctic and they discover him in the late 1800s. Like he's mm. there. They take him and they put him in the Hoover Dam and they reverse engineer everything based on his technology. And obviously you think about it, so at some point, Megatron fell because that's how he got here. And of course, where did he fall from? I mean, if you think about it, it's like if there was any connection with him and the devil, like literally you could think he would have fell. He's somewhere in the Arctic. So he fell straight there. They found him in the ice and they literally reinverse all the technology. And that's where that stuff comes from. I mean, that's like the even that kind of sounds similar to when people say there was, you know, Roswell, the alien, you know, alien spaceships crash. And they use that tech, reverse in reverse technology, and then they now you have your the modern smartphones and microchips and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's there's clearly something with that whole idea of like that. I always said I did a video about this that so you have storm gods who are all associated with lightning, and then there's these power buildings in America that obviously they could either be old world buildings or they're just they have these. I mean. This stuff looks satanic on him. I said, look at the GE building in New York City and look at like there's um, the Niagara Mohawk building in like Syracuse, New York. Like there's another one in Kansas City, the Power and Light building. They look like straight from Ghostbusters. Like they look like these evil buildings and they're all associated with electricity. And then, yeah, the Prince of the Power of the Air is like, is that where that comes from? That like literally he gave man like the like like the Prometheus mythos of like he gave man fire he mm -hmm. gave him electrical like electricity electricity but it is like it does seem like i mean we all use this stuff but yeah it does seem like there's there's a cost to using this not just monetarily but like you we are burning coal you know you're seeing these black plumes of smoke and it, it's 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 ultimately and again i think as we use we try to use these things for good Ultimately, they're not that good. You know, I mean, like there's a there's a price to pay for what we standing from in front of our computers and our phones all the time. Mm -hmm. hmm. The Amish have it right, maybe. I think that I, 
Well, I mean, again, yeah. like <laughs> I think they were talking about like during the pandemic and stuff like that. They fared pretty well somehow. Yeah. Absolutely. Not being around all the other people and didn't take in <laughs> all this, all the stuff. And yeah, they're, I mean, I guess if you think like I, the older I get, the more I'm like, I want to get off the grid. And it's like, yeah, the, the Amish yeah, do yeah. probably have it right. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, somebody told me that um, getting away from technology, phones, TVs, computers, social media might be our wilderness. You know, in the Bible, they had their wilderness to go to. Well, ours yeah. might be disconnecting. Yeah. That may well, yeah, that'd be a good analogy for it, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. I'm wondering I'm, I'm wondering as well. I mean, I talk about technology quite a lot with um, Vicky Joy Anderson not that long ago. And we were talking about like, a, like yeah. a net is taking over our minds and affecting even the way we perceive reality when we're dreaming and she brought this idea that um it seems like teenagers dreams today are very different from us in the sense that they're actually like having full movie experiences as dreams rather mm. than like symbolic weird symbolic ways that we maybe would have we would have had in the past like daniel let's say having his wild dream about the beast with 10 horns or something like mm -hmm. that you know and she's saying is it possible the technology is so integrated with their minds now that it's kind of projecting these whole realities in their brains that are kind of like a movie script in some way um but she was talking about ai as well and i think ai is something maybe we need to talk about in regards to all this because this this is this seems to be like the amalgamation of this type of technology i think into one mm -hmm. This is the result. This is the end game of all this technology that Satan's created from the 1800s developed to today. Let's say to create mm. what's some kind of some kind of what is this? <laughs> and people have also said to me, "Is it possible a lot of these photos that are suddenly arising right now, showing um, millennial kingdom architecture, let's say, is just AI generated images to make us believe in a false history?" I suppose I play devil's advocate again here, um, you, but with the the rise of this technology i mean can you have you seen the videos that can be made now just with like a prompt like a few I'm, just I'm, 10 words you know yeah i'm surprised at that actually it's funny because i i was my daughter was showing me a video and it was about like i don't know megalodon or something like that but i was like it was it's clearly obviously an ai voice and it's all ai and obviously it's coming at you like crazy and i was like saying i wonder if this is somebody just using chat gbc to literally just say make me a, a conspiratorial video about megalodon and sharks mm -hmm. Because it, it was stupid. I mean, it, it, and, but it was engaging the way it was done. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what they used to do that. Obviously, kind of, as somebody who makes the videos myself, without all that, I'm like, oh, this is this is gonna take <laughs> this is gonna take eyeballs from my videos. It's like because that might be easy for the people to spit videos out like that. But mm -hmm. on the but to to go to that point of like, can AI produce these images? Obviously, they can. But at the same time, we have real world examples of these things. So I think that like yeah. so. Is it possible that, like, you remove people from the pictures that we were talking about? They're real eerie, mm -hmm. possibly, but there's still mud on the streets. The, we still have evidence of like buildings that are buried up to you know mm -hmm. past their first floor. Mm -hmm, so yeah. like you know, so like, what would be the point of me making more of those? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're like literally. I said it's it's the opposite because they're trying to wipe these things out in real time. Mm -hmm. But but I do think that there is in the play in this in the space that we you know, cause we're likely to believe lots of things. Yeah. Don't, don't go run out there first. You know, if you see something that looks too good to be true or, or too bad to be true, because I think that obviously they can, AI does it all the time. People talking about like, you know, dog men and weird things. And you're like, yeah, I don't think that looks real. That's probably, if it doesn't, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it probably is not real. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think a lot of people equated maybe because the, the, the argument is based on this so the tech we have is maybe what 20 to 50 years behind what they actually have if you get what i mean mm -hmm. so what we see ai in development today is actually nothing compared to the ai that actually exists and um, people have equated maybe the mandela effect and the way things are just changing everywhere it may have something to do with this ai editing system that's going back and editing every record it can find on the internet for example of anything at all right and changing it slightly um and i, I think uh, what i'm saying is people have, have equated that oh well this millennial kingdom tartarian stuff only appeared recently do we do we as researchers do do we need to be careful with this but like I said, as you said what well, we have physical buildings we can go and look at which mm. are clearly buried underground and have mm. those little windows in there so we can but i think the whole point is now we're living in this age of technology that we're trusting it so much it's easy to so doubt about anything now we can't really it's hard for us to figure out what is true because there's just so much working against us and so much disinformation yeah. mixed in with this as well isn't there 
I suppose I'll, I'll leave that point there and let you guys mull it over. But um, yeah, it's just something I've been thinking about. I want you to get together.